guys, what's going on? So today I am pretty pumped because I'm here to do the fourth and final review um, for the quartet, The Lunar Chronicles, and that was for the book Winter by Marissa Meyer. I just finished this book today, so I'm hoping that I can organize my thoughts a little bit and not come across like just rambling, nonsensical nonsense. In my previous reviews for the series for Cinder and Scarlet and Cress, I just sort of went on rants about how much I loved them and really didn't have any critiques. This book was a little bit different. I had a couple things um, that I... Uh, would have liked to see maybe a little bit different, um, but but I also had a whole lot of things that I really, really loved about it, of course, so without further ado, let's just get right into it. that I consistently like seeing from Marissa Meyer. The first one is just how amazing and natural she is at um, adapting all of the fairy tales, not only in their own individual stories, but she brings all of these fairy tales together and has created the seamless, flawless, adaptation and a brand new take on all these fairy tales and she just made them fit together so perfectly. So there was no point in any of the novels and not in winter either where I was thinking like this is a bit of a stretch. One of my favorite things about the Lunar Chronicles is just reading them and seeing all of these all of these moments to develop where I can point to the original fairy tale and be like yes that's awesome that's an awesome take on it um, and it fits so perfectly with the story and the second thing I really really like about Marissa Myers writing in these novels is the characters themselves they're so well developed and they're so diverse and so unique they're just all fun and fun to read about but my favorite part though um, isn't necessarily seeing them all individually, but seeing them all come together. In winter, we got to see all of these minds and all of these personalities um, be just utilized so well in strategy and in different aspects to the story, and so I really love that. There's things that I love and hate about all of the characters, and to me that's what makes a good character, and so yeah, I could just like rave about the characters forever. The character of Winter specifically, she's probably one of my favorite characters actually. I liked seeing her character develop. She was introduced in Cress a little bit, and she was very, very intriguing, um, and so it was really nice to dive into Winter and see her character developed. Jason and Winter are definitely two, or, or definitely one of my favorite pairings in the series. They're just wonderful. They're just wonderful, and I love Jason because he's just like so supportive and understanding of Winter, um, and he just like loves her despite everything that's going on with her, with her mind, and everything like that. I just... Winter and Jason are just absolutely wonderful. They are wonderful. And so um, I really liked Jason as a character as well because we were introduced to him and he was more of a mysterious character who we weren't really sure if we were supposed to like love or hate him. So it was really nice seeing his character development from that aspect. And I would have loved to see more from them. It's almost kind of sad that we had to wait until the last book in the series to really get introduced to them because they are, they are just, a book, a book pairing that was just so lovely, lovely to read about. People love Cress and Thorn as a couple in these books. I love Cress as a character. She is so cute. I love reading about her. She's just like, she's fantastic. She's just so shy and cute and just wonderful. Um, my beef is with Thorn because here's the thing. Every girl knows what it feels like to have a crush on a guy and then see that guy flirt with somebody else right in front of them, even though he knows very well that the girl has a crush on him. Reading about Thorn and how he sort of like flirts with everyone, even though he knows Cress is in love with him pretty much, and also it turns out that he's in love with her too. Sometimes he has reasons for it, but there are times in the novels where he doesn't, where he's just kind of a douche. And uh, so those are the moments that I definitely don't appreciate about Thorn. There are moments in the books where I'm just like, dude, this character's kind of a jerk. Sometimes I just don't even think that it's really forgivable. Like Thorn to me is just kind of like, he needs to grow up a bit before he 
confesses his love to this girl who he's hurt on numerous occasions by just kind of being a player and a jerk. So, I don't know. I, I think I'm not a, as huge of a fan as Crescent Thorn's relationship as a lot of other people are, and you guys can definitely give your give me your opinions on that. Just throw me a comment down below. Are any of you in agreement with me or am I just out on my own here? Because I don't know. Like, I'm just not as huge a fan of Thorn when it comes to like the romantic side of things as a lot of other people are. I do, however, still like him as a character because he's funny and he's witty and he's sarcastic and he does, just doesn't care. So he brings a lot to the table when it comes to the novels, but I just don't appreciate him in the romantic role. So I don't know. You can give me your thoughts about that. I think as a finale, Winter didn't meet my expectations as much as I wanted it to. Um, I think Part of the problem was that I just left too much time between reading the other books in the series and jumping into winter. I kind of had to reorient my, myself with the characters and with the scenarios and the circumstances. Just trying to get my mind back and remembering everything, I think, uh, disconnected me with what was happening for the first quarter of the book a little bit, um, but that wasn't Marissa Meyer's fault. I felt like for a finale novel, especially when it comes to a revolution, I felt like things just went a little bit too fast. I would have liked to see a little bit more strategy development with the team and with the crew. Um, we sort of just saw them come to Luna. We didn't see a lot of the development of the strategy before they just kind of jumped right into it, and the revolution, to me, it just seemed like came up out of nowhere. And my Main concern with that is, with Luna especially, we're dealing with people who were like highly brainwashed <laughs> and they were under a lot of manipulation. And so I just am not convinced that a revolution would happen as fast as Marissa Meyer put forward in this book. So I, I realize the book is already over 800 pages, so developing it more maybe would have made the book like way too long or something. But yeah, it definitely just had like a rushed feeling to it. And some of the ideas I just would have liked to see um, a little bit more detail behind them. Some things happen in these novels that I thought nothing really came of them, that I would have liked to see more, more consequences come from them. The one example I will give you is the video that Kai, uh, that Lavana forced Kai to do with her, the propaganda video. I was definitely expecting there to be more repercussions, maybe like some hurt feelings with Cinder. I was even expecting to see repercussions um, with the people in the outer sectors of Luna seeing that video and sort of struggling with whether or not to believe Kai or believe Cinder, but in the end, that video was like hardly mentioned again. It was sort of like, it just happened, and I think it was more so just a tool to show kind of what a jerk Lavana was. One other thing I would have loved to see developed uh, and utilized a little bit more was the idea behind the device that gives Earthens the ability to not be controlled by Lunars. There were points directly where, where Marissa Meyer said that Cinder thought it would be a good tool to use against Lavana to take her down, and then it just wasn't brought up again. I thought that was a really good direction that she was going with. That didn't have to be the only tool in the revolution, and it should have been, but I thought it could have been a bigger tool, but instead it was sort of an afterthought, and it was left until pretty much the ending credits of the book to, uh, to address. And I think this is more a personal opinion than anything, but I personally would have liked to see more development with that and more, more of a utilization of that um, in the overthrowing of Lavana and her empire. Um, cause it was, it was really an interesting concept and it was like a huge deal in the first books and the second books, like just this discussion of what is this device in Cinder's head and, um, yeah, I just felt like she really did nothing with it. Honestly, overall, I still gave this book a four and a half out of five stars. I just love the writing of Marissa Meyer. She's easy to read. She, her characters are easy to connect with. It's easy to get behind the main characters and hope for them. They might not be... Um, like the most suspenseful because you sort of see everything coming, but I don't think that's necessarily the point of the books either. These books are just an easy fun read and I really loved this series. If you guys have read this book and you have thoughts on it, let me know in the comments down below. Give me a shout out on Twitter. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I'm definitely always open to discussion. Thank you so much for watching this little review of my opinions on the book and we will catch you next time. Bye. listening to this book on audiobook and again it's one of those books I almost wish that I was reading on hard copy but I'm following it pretty well and I am loving it so far arming but also very laid-back and normal like he was a normal human being a normal 
guy. And I really liked that. When it came to the part where he